Hey everybody, welcome back to FRN 120. Thank you for rejoining me uh, as we continue our riveting conversation about the fundamentals of electricity, uh, going into part two, which we're going to cover a lot of terminology in this particular segment. Uh, we've used some of the terminology as it is. Uh, we've talked about uh, conductors, and we've talked about uh, loads, and we've talked about uh, power sources and things like that. But we're going to go a little bit deeper into them, and we're going to start with voltage. And voltage is simply the pressure or force available to the circuit that we have. Okay. So in other words, if I plug my vacuum cleaner in there, that completes the circuit to my vacuum cleaner motor. Uh, it takes it out to the motor and it comes back to the neutral side and that circuit is complete. Remember, we're always trying to get back home. It leaves out of one of the, uh, the spots here on the outlet. It comes back to the outlet and it goes back through. It completes that circuit, okay? But this, um, the amount of uh, power that we have, or the voltage, excuse me, the amount of voltage that we have uh, is the force available to it. Now, we're not doing anything with this right now, but it's available to it, okay? to us. So in common voltages are 480 volts. You'll see that a lot with industry. I worked with a lot of 480 volt uh, systems when I was out in industry for many, many years. 240 volts in the residential and commercial uh, areas. With the residential, you'll see 240 run your uh, dryer. You'll see 240 run your um, range or your stove if it's electric. Um, you'll also see it run your HVAC or heating and air conditioning system. So 240 is also in residential and 120 is very common. Uh, in an outlet like this that you'll see in your homes. And it's annotated with a V or an E, V being voltage or E in electromotive force, uh, but the, this, the still either V or E stands for voltage, okay? And you'll see that in formulas as well. One thing that voltage is not, it is not juice. Please don't use this term around me, okay? Uh, I actually had a guy in the lab and he kept saying juice this and juice that, and I asked him to leave, okay? If you can't be any better than that, so, and also try to talk to a, a technical um, uh, person uh, on the phone and tell them how much juice you have at their device. You know, it's, it's just not going to, you know, it's just not the proper term to use. So juice comes from oranges, and let's just leave it at that, okay? Now, voltage, as I said, is the pressure available in the circuit. And as I said earlier in the video, uh, I like to use analogies, and it's very similar to the water pressure that's available uh, from the city or county that's in your home. It's all back behind this faucet. You're not turning it on, it's not doing anything with it, but it is available to you. It's that force, it's that pressure. You have X number of PS, you know, 50 PSI of water pressure at your home or whatever the county provides. Same thing with voltage. The, the, electric, uh, the electricity comes from the um, provider into your home and it's got the different voltages. But that's the force that's available for our circuit, okay? And again, typical uh, uh, outlet there for uh, household use. Now, voltage, is measured with a multimeter, okay? And I just so happen to have one here. This is a little Fluke 110, I think you can see this, okay? It's a real simple uh, a, a multimeter. Multi meaning it can, it's multi-function. It can measure voltage, current, uh, and resistance. Again, we're gonna get into all that, but this is a typical meter. 110 doesn't cost all that much. Really handy, really good thing to have, um, particularly if you're gonna do any type of troubleshooting in the brewery, okay? This is an absolute must, okay? And you can buy cheaper ones, you can, but, but you know, sometimes you get what you pay for. Uh, Fluke is a really well-known name. I'm not pimping them for any particular reason. It's just that I've used them over the years for 20 plus years, and they're rock solid. They're a good instrument. So, uh, but this is a uh, this is a, a, a multimeter that we use to measure voltage, okay? And you can't measure juice with a multimeter, all right? Um, and as the picture shows here, uh, just like my, <clears throat> my meter head, you've got a couple of leads hanging out of it, you've got it plugged into it, and they've got probes on the end, and what you do are you are measuring the potential difference between your hot side and your neutral, and your hot side being 120 volts, your neutral being zero volts, because there's no voltage present on the neutral, okay, all this we will get into, but you're measuring the difference between the 120 and the zero, and you stick your probes into there, and with AC it does not matter, you can go left, it doesn't matter if this one's on the hot side or that one's on the hot side because it's constantly alternating as we talked about in that last video and we'll demonstrate this in the lab as well. But you're measuring the potential difference between this and this. This is 120, this is zero. The difference between them is 120 volts, okay? And next is current. We talked about that a little bit already. Uh, current is the flow of electrons through the circuit via the, con the uh, conductor or the wire. 
and we measure those in amps. We don't say X number of currents, okay? We say number of amps, and AC, and amps can be AC or DC, because, backing up, current is the electron flow through a wire, okay? Through that conductor, right? Whether it's AC or DC, if you've got a complete circuit to your power so source, from your power source, back through your power, to your power source, you have a complete circuit and you have electron flow. So AC or DC can both have electron flow and measured in amps. Now, if there, we also measure them in milliamps, which is a thousandth of an amp. We use this a lot in control circuits, particularly a range of 4 to 20 milliamps. And that's way deeper than I want to get in this right now. We'll talk a little bit about, about that when we get into controls, but I just want you to know that they are, they are also measured in milliamps, okay? And we typically use a, an amp clamp Okay, this is an amp clamp. This is also a fluke, okay? It opens up so that you can clamp it onto a wire, okay? And you'll measure the, the current going through that wire, okay? We'll talk about that in just a second as well. But this is a real uh, amp clamp, the one that I've used before. Um, and it can measure uh, amps or milliamps as well. And as we said, milliamps are thousandths of an amp. And how you use it, just to kind of show you that with my finger, but uh, you've got a complete circuit. Okay, so we have current flowing. This load could be a light bulb, it could be a motor, it could be a heating element in our brew house, it could be anything, okay? That, but it's converting that electron flow into some form of work, okay? In this case, uh, the current flow is going through here in the circuit, and we are, we've got our amp clamp wrapped around it, and it, through its electronic circuitry, measures the current flow going through there. Now, if you open the circuit, let's say we take our load out and you've got a gap between here and here, there's no condu conductivity here, there's no current flow, then you're not going to measure anything on your amp clamp, okay? So uh, it can only be wrapped around one wire, because if you wrap around two wires, they will cancel each other out and get none, uh, zero on there, and you'll think you've got no current flow, and it will mess your trouble tuning up, or it could possibly hurt you as well. But this is simply how you use an amp clamp, and you're going to get a chance to use those as well, okay? So amps, and it's annotated by Amp, uh, the capital A, or a small m and an A indicating milliamps, all right? And just a little trivia here for you, when we're talking about amps, it was um, named after an amp, uh, the gentleman's last name was Ampere, okay, Frenchman, who did a lot of studies with electricity, and what it is is basically the number of, of electrons that flow past a certain point in one second, okay? Obviously, you're not going to stand with you can't count them because you can't see them, and it's very impractical, but that is just an illustration of that's what an amp is, okay? So we, we're sitting here with amp, uh, excuse me, with electrons flowing by a certain point, and the number of, of uh, uh, electrons that flow by that certain point in one second, that's how many amps you have. Obviously, if the current is flowing faster, you're going to have a higher number past that point, okay? So you have an increase in amps. So just a little trivia there. Uh, and like I said, uh, the formula for calcul calculating amps, nobody cares. Okay, we're not going to do that because you're not going to use that in a brewery, all right? So I'm not going to teach you any more than you need to know, all right? But there is a formula for that. We're not going to worry about it, okay? So, uh, knowing, however, knowing how much current is flowing through the conductor, or, or in the circuit, I should say, is very important because it helps you determine what size of conductor you need, and that is critical. Uh, for is to make sure things are safe and that they run properly, okay? If you have uh, too big of a conductor, if you use uh, too big of wires, well, I'll just use a big giant wire, and that way you won't have to worry about it being undersized. Well, that's a big waste of money, plus it's also sometimes it's hard to, uh, to bend and to terminate. It takes up a lot of room in the cabinet, so smaller wire is better uh, up to a point. You won't get too small because if you do, you'll wind up with fire and damage to the components. Now, I'm talking about just burning the components, uh, setting them on fire, but um, if you don't have the proper size conductor to carry the, the amount of amperage you, that that device needs to run properly, then it's going to be sort of like starving. It's going to be choking a, a, a hose off, and it's not going to run to its full capacity. Sort of like a, a sprinkler, one of those little rotating sprinklers on the end of a garden hose. If you crimp it off and don't allow it in your hose, or your hose is so small, that it loses a lot of the, the uh, flow, it's restricted, then it's going to turn very slowly and not very be very effective. 
That's fine for a sprinkler. However, when you're dealing with an electrical device such as a motor or a relay coil or something like that, it's got to have the full voltage and the full current flow in order for it to operate properly. If it's a motor and it's not turning fast enough, it's going to build up heat very, very quickly uh, and it will burn the motor up. Okay? So it's, that's why we want to know current. That is one of the reasons that current is, is so important to us. Okay? And finally, there's resistance, okay? Resistance is, like we talked about in the load earlier, it's the opposition to the flow of electrons. And that conversion uh, of the electron flow into that form of work, in this case it's heat that we can see in the light bulb, that, um, that, flow, that flow there is, our, is uh, the resistance of that flow is what creates the work, okay? And that's where all the work takes place. So that's the opposition of that. Okay, and it's going to create heat as well. Now, resistance, a little another fun fact for you, resistance. Uh, we measure that in ohms. We can also use our multimeter okay, to measure the resistance of something in our circuit. Uh, it's just in, uh, with our multimeter. Okay? Uh, it has a set setting. We measure voltage, and then we just turn the dial and measure ohms. So it's measuring a multitude of things, it's just multimeter. All right? So there's the multimeter, and that's what we use to measure resistance. It's named by, after a guy named George uh, Simon Ohm, okay? and there is no E on his name. It's not a misspell. Kind of a serious looking dude, but uh, he was very, very important. Um, he came up with Ohm's Law, and that states that voltage across a conductor, a voltage, the force that's going across our uh, wire, our conductor, is directly proportional to the current that's flowing through the conductor. Okay? And it's annotated with an omega sign or a horseshoe, if you call it the one. And this is Ohm's Law. This is the Ohm's Law triangle. Okay? He didn't develop the triangle so much, but this is just an easy way to, to learn it. Okay? And Ohm's Law simply states that using it mathematically, you can figure this mathematically, um, if you have voltage on the top, it's always on voltage, it's always on the top of our triangle. Okay? And we can <clears throat> we can uh, uh, calculate the current and the resistance based on two of the three components. So if we have voltage up here and we know our current, then we can divide the voltage by the current and that will give us the resistance in ohms of the load device that we're using. Likewise, if we, have, if we know our voltage and we know our resistance, but we don't know what the amount of current that the resistance is going to, to allow uh, to flow through our circuit, we simply divide voltage by resistance, and that gives us our current. And then finally, okay, you can take these two. If you know your resistance and you know your current, you can multiply these two and then multiply the two, and you'll get the required voltage needed for that circuit. Okay, so but this is Ohm's all and, and put in a triangle form. E is always on the top. It does not matter if I and R are swapped to left or right. It does not matter, but E always has to be on top. Okay, so let's put this to um, let's put this to uh, in an application here. So using DC, okay, this is the symbol for a battery here, and we got 24 volts DC. We have a current flow going through a light bulb, and our lamp has a value of three ohms of resistance. In other words, it will have a resistance of, of the current flow of three ohms. Okay, and so we've got two of our three factors. What we don't know, we've got the voltage, we have the ohms or resistance. What we don't know is what's our current flow going to be, okay? So let's just plug this into our triangle. It's just that simple to find out. We have 24 volts and we have 3 ohms of resistance. You divide 24 by 3 and you wind up with 8 amps, okay? So if I've got a 24 volt battery and I've got a, uh, uh, or power supply, it could be power supply, remember that, uh, it could be a power supply, but if we've got 24 volts coming out of there and we're pushing that current through our lamp that has three ohms of resistance, then the amount of current going through our circuit is eight amps, okay? And in other words, we said eight amps is going to be X number of uh, electrons flowing past the point in one second. It's going to create eight amps, okay? It's going to be measured eight amps. And we would measure that with our amp clamp, okay? We just clamp it around one of the conductor. There's only one conductor here in this circuit. Uh, showing here, I just clamp it around like that, and it would show up, show up eight amps. Okay, so there's an example. And in putting it in an application with the brew house, okay, 
we have a coil, that electrical coil in the bottom of our brew kettle, um, our, our boil kettle, excuse me, um, our mash tun, uh, or our hot liquor tank, okay? Uh, in this case, it's a circular coil. It doesn't make any difference. It's still going to create that resistance in our load, all right? So, and I'm, I'm just using this as a home brewing thing, so we've got 120 uh, volts available to us, all right? And let's just suppose that the heating coil provides six ohms, uh, is designed with six ohms of resistance in our circuit, okay? Doing the math again, 120 volts divided by the known six ohms that our uh, heating element creates, and it's going to draw 20 amps of current, okay? So, again, just putting that to numbers uh, and showing you that, all right? One more time, if, now here's something interesting, okay? Uh, if you have 240 volts, a different circuit, okay, or different, a different uh, voltage, with 240 volts, and we know that it's going to pull 20 amps, we can figure out what the ohm value should be for this heating element. Now, where this is all important is that, why do I want to know the ohm value of a heating element, okay? So that you'll know whether, if you've got a good one, you'll know the known value of the ohm, the ohm value of that known good one. Um, but in, if one's shorted or open, then you can measure the resistance and know that. So, uh, you've got 200, uh, 40 volts and 20 amps in the circuit, then doing the math, it should ohm out with our with our meter 12 ohms of resistance. Okay, so that's just putting the math to this a little bit. Um, I kind of want to stop at this point um, and break this video up. I've got one more section that I want to talk about, and then we will take a break and then uh, come back. Okay, so again, digest this a little bit. Remember, uh, you know, kind of learn your formulas, but that's where the formulas come in to play with the terminology. And uh, this will conclude this, part, this particular video, and be sure to come back for the next one. See you then.